Hi Conley Clan fam! So today I thought I would share our food journey with you guys because we do grocery hauls on our channel and uh, we do a lot of cooking on our channel as well. And we didn't always do homemade cooking. As a matter of fact, we only started doing that probably about eight months ago. And we have been through a lot when it comes to food. From kids with trauma, kids with ADHD, and finding our own way with healthy eating. So I wanna start back a ways uh, when my oldest daughter, Brianna, she was probably about, oh, let's say five years old. She was in kindergarten and the kindergarten teacher was having a really hard time with her. Um, and they said that uh, I needed to take her to a doctor to have her checked for ADHD. I already had some suspicions that she had ADHD and actually ODD. Um, so they said though that if I didn't, if we didn't do something, that she was going to end up getting kicked out of school. So she had some pretty big behaviors when she was younger um, and really just liked to test boundaries. So we ended up taking her to the doctor and we knew you know, at home it was a struggle too, it wasn't just school. So we took her to a doctor and they did diagnose her with ADHD. The doctor actually said that he did not want to diagnose her with ODD even though she possibly, probably, he said she probably had it. Um, but he didn't want to diagnose her that way because he said a lot of times the ADHD meds will help with the ODD. And we have actually found that it does. Taking some of the um, stimulant medicines for ADHD, that actually does help them with their behaviors. And I think honestly it's that the ADHD meds allows them to not be so impulsive. So they're actually able to make better decisions. <laughs> so, okay, so we started out way back then on the food journey because um, she was on medicine until she was 11 years old. And people kept telling me things about food and at this point in time when I was younger and I really didn't know a whole lot. So I, I tried changing our food but I didn't really know what that meant or what that looked like in my early 20s. And so I did change some things but nothing seemed to work. So she ended up on meds but at 11 years old, Sean and I were doing some research on health and we came across um, some interesting information about how, you know, like your body uses the food that you put in it to um, create new cells. And I don't know if you guys know this, but every seven years you have completely brand new cells um, that you did seven years before that. So every seven years your cells regenerate uh, like 100%. Um, anyways, that's the information that I had found. So I thought, okay, so your body is using the food you put in it to build those cells, and so if you put in garbage, then you're probably gonna have not very good cells, or sick cells, or weak cells. And so then the food becomes really important to build good healthy cells, and you know a lot of times that is fruits and veggies that at that point is when sean and i decided that we were going to try becoming vegan and you know the difference between vegetarian and vegan is vegans don't eat anything animal and um you can you can even have some um like 100 percent vegan where they don't wear anything animal they don't so we were just we decided we were just going to not try not to eat anything that was made from animal. Now vegetarian we could have still had like milk and cheese and things like that just not ate any meat. We decided we were going to try going vegan. And um that is cuz we found some information when we were doing our research on health uh that basically said fruits and vegetables are what you eat. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, um, and you know oils some of the healthier oils that come from you know like the coconut oil and things like that so we decided that we were going to try doing that it was really hard for us I I what I said back then was we eat such good tasting food you know unhealthy food is 
very yummy. I mean, it's delicious. You know, the meat and the salt and the, um, the, the oils and the fat and the sugar. And, and you can obviously have sugar even if you're vegan, but all of that stuff, it tastes so good. So when we switched from that to vegan, I felt like the taste wasn't there. And I tried all different types of recipes and all different types of ingredients, and it, we still felt like it was really hard. We ended up eating a lot of potatoes, but we did try some things that I really ended up liking, like instead of soy sauce, we used tamari or uh, liquid aminos. Uh, so there are some things that we tried that ended up sticking. I actually, there's something called Beyond Meat, and um, we went to Whole Foods a lot, and we bought a lot of things from Whole Foods. So they had that there, and that was actually pretty good. So we, at that time, were trying a lot of new things. We did a lot of our shopping at Whole Foods. And what we found out is, we, because we only had Brianna at that time, we were able to take her on the food journey with us. And we found out that her hyperactivity completely went away. So she was extremely hyperactive, um, wouldn't stop talking, wouldn't stop moving, um, had a hard time focusing on anything. So, except for if she hyper-focused, and she did have hyper-focus, but we found that when we went on this food journey, becoming vegan, that um, all of a sudden the hyperactivity went away. And she was able to focus better. And it was, a, I thought it was a miracle because here was this child who wasn't able to do any of that, was bouncing off the walls all the time, um, and she was able to focus and be calm and sit still. And so what we found with her was that um, we started reintroducing foods back into her diet. Um, when, so Sean and I went vegan for six months. Uh, and I think it must have been about the time that we got Jade and Lily. Um, and I'll tell you, fostering is such a big change in your life that a lot of times um, it becomes hard to do things that are challenging for you. So eating vegan was really challenging for us. And I think that must have been about the time that we started going back to um, a less vegan diet. We still did buy a lot of stuff at Whole Foods though. Uh, and we found that if we bought like cereal from Whole Foods, uh, Brianna could have the cereal from Whole Foods and that was okay. Uh, so a lot of the stuff from Whole Foods was okay for her to eat. What we found were her triggers uh, as far as her food setting up off, off the hyperactivity. So uh, hot chocolate was one of them. Red dye was one of them and interesting but gum any type of gum it didn't matter what type of gum whether it was um, like trident or whether it was bubble gum or any any gum so a lot of times what would happen so we figured this out we stopped giving her those things but what we found was when she was in middle school uh, friends would have gum and and in this middle school at this time they actually let the kids chew gum which uh, I know a lot of times kids can't chew gum in school but this school let them so she had gum all the time at school so she would come um, home from school so I'd be outside waiting to pick her up she'd hop in the car and within a matter of 60 seconds I could tell and I'd look at her and I'd say oh you had gum today and she'd be like how did you know and I could just tell because she would be bouncing off the walls. So that was part of our food journey and we figured that out. And I was so happy that we figured out it was a food sensitiv sensitivity for her. Now, I'm not saying that she didn't have ADHD because there were times where it was still a little hard for her to focus. And the doctors were kind of iffy on whether they thought she actually s still had the ADHD or not. Um, so we did find though that we were able to get rid of that. So we, we at that point um, in our lives, we figured out how important food was and what you put in your body. And we knew it, but we actually witnessed it. And so, um, so we were able to then manage her if it was ADHD, but she was no longer on meds. So from the age of five until the age of 11, she, was, she had to be on meds. It was like to save her life because she would ride her bike in front of cars. She would do all kinds of crazy things without thinking. Um, and one time she darted across a parking lot in front of a car. She was standing right next to me and boom, there she went right across, right in front of a car. And I, I said it was God 
that saved her that day because I honestly don't know how she didn't get hit. Uh, she should have gotten hit and she didn't. And that was a miracle. So, so at that time, um, we found out the, the true importance of food, especially in our lives. So she was able to go off of meds and we were thrilled. Now, we continued on a healthy food journey um, for several years. We did a lot of uh, purchasing from Whole Foods. Uh, we did not, we were not vegan, but we ate a lot of healthy meals. Um, we bought, if we bought things like cereal, we would buy it from Whole Foods. So we started eating really healthy and I also went on, on the um, Whole30 diet at that time. And I was learning a lot about calories and what, like what wasn't good for my body because um, with your whole food, your whole 30 journey, um, you can find out what is not good for you. So it will have you go off of everything except for, I think it's fruits and veggies and um, you, I think you can have some meat with it. I, I'm trying to think it's been a lot of years ago, uh, but it has to be like, um, like from whole foods, like the meat, no sugar in it, no added sugars, no, so I did go on that and I did the whole 30 about 85% of the way. So I started cutting things out and then slowly started integrating things back in, kind of like we did with Brianna. And I found out that bread was my enemy. <laughs> and so anytime I started eating bread, I would instantly gain weight. And like I would jump on the scale the next day and I would have gained weight. So I found out that the cheese, the dairy, um, the meat, any of that stuff, none of that affected me. It, it was the bread. Anytime I ate bread, tortillas, even oatmeal, I found, and I don't know if it's because that's a grain, but um, I found with oatmeal, the same thing would happen. So I stopped eating bread and oatmeal and um, any, any type of breads, like tortillas and all that. So that, and that was really hard. That's because I was used to having like uh, toast in the morning with my breakfast. And um, like, if you eat something like a sandwich, you have it on bread. Or if you eat uh, like tacos, you have it on a tortilla. Or so all of that stuff. And we were eating a lot of oatmeal too, because oatmeal um, is pretty healthy. So I had to completely change the way I thought about eating at that time because of how the bread affected me. So just another part of our food journey. Then the biggest part of our food journey was when we got our sibling group of now six, used to be five. So again, like I said before, every time we would get like a new placement um, or something like that, like a new placement of kids or sometimes even the, um, the respite kids or the emergency kids or it, it just kind of changes everything about your life because all of a sudden you have like maybe some appointments you have to go to or a different school you have to go to or um, you have different people coming in your house for meetings and you've got court and things like that. And so I found that it was, it was really hard to um, stay on a healthy, stay doing a healthy lifestyle with eating when you have all of these changes and fluctuations and different things going on and so at this time though, we got our sibling group of five and we were still eating fairly healthy, doing a lot of buying from Whole Foods and I couldn't get the kids to eat anything. I, they just wouldn't eat anything. They hated everything I made. Now imagine I'm cooking for a family at the time of 11. We had four kids already there. We had another five come in and then we had two adults. So we had 11 people in the house. And the only people that would really eat the food were Sean, myself, and Brianna. And Jade was pretty good about eating. Now Lily was still pretty young. So um, she must have been maybe about three, I think. So she didn't eat a whole lot. Um, and also I think we had, Ga we had Gavin, so he must have been about two. So he wasn't eating, eating very much either. But still, I would make all of this food and then nobody would eat it because the kids didn't like anything. And they came from um, a lifestyle where either they went hungry and so they were used to just being hungry or they had things like just 
plain noodles. So I started, I had to like backtrack on all of the things we were buying and eating because um, that's really hard when you make enough food for 11 people and then you only have three or four people that eat it. And then you have all these leftovers and then nobody eats the leftovers because they didn't like it in the first place. And then you have all these leftovers that end up going bad. And it was extremely frustrating. Very, very frustrating. So what we did was we ended up trying to figure out what can we get the kids eat because we wanted to build some food security for them. Um, that is so important with the kids. And you have to start with making sure their bellies are full. So I had to completely go against everything we had just done. Uh, and I had to start buying things like granola bars and breakfast bars and um, cereal. Uh, what else did I buy that, I mean, like basically everything. And then they were not used to having foods with so much stuff in it. So like we would put in like the, um, the sauces and the cheeses and, and, they just weren't used to, I, this, my take on it is they were not used to all of those flavors. Uh, they were used to eating very, fairly plain, a lot of sugar, and probably a lot of things like maybe chicken nuggets or hot dogs or, and I'm not saying that that stuff is bad. I'm just saying that that wasn't how we were eating at that time. And so we had to completely change the way we were thinking so that way we could get the kids to eat. So at the time we, we were doing so good at eating healthy and then it basically just got completely undone uh, because we just wanted to make sure that um, the kids would eat what we made. So I had to go find all new recipes to make, um, even like tacos. I would make tacos and they would have, they would have only um, the hamburger meat with a tiny little bit of cheese on it in their tortilla and that was it. Now that's still how Gavin eats his tacos because Gavin is, Gavin went from being really good about eating to all of a sudden he's really terrible about eating, super, super picky. We all think, um, including his doctor, that it might be a sensory thing. He does have oral sensory issues. So, um, but back then he was actually eating and the other kids though, you know, we had to start slowly incorporating things for them. So now some of the kids eat like lettuce on their tacos and salsa on their tacos and they'll eat other stuff now on their tacos. It's not just meat and cheese only, but that took, it took us a long time to get to that point. So again, so I had to start backtracking and I had to figure out, okay, what, what am I going to make? So, and you have, you know, all these meals. So we had, at that time they were in public school. So we, we did breakfast and we did dinner and then they would have lunch at school, but they would come home from school and complain about school lunches. They hated them too. So at that time I figured out, okay, when I heard them complain about the school lunches, I'm like, okay, it's not just me. <laughs> it's just this type of food in general and anything that they're not used to having because their school would actually send them home with extra food. Like they'd have um, lunch bags that they would make for the kids and they would send them home like on the weekends. So we, uh, went, I went through all my recipes and I figured out what could I still make and what was I gonna have to change. And then I started looking for new recipes, really simple recipes. And that is why we actually still to this day do a lot of things where you set out the toppings like baked potato bar they get their baked potato and then they get to pick what they put on it. Um, with tacos, we set everything out and they pick what they put on it. We do that with um, uh, power bowls. The power bowls, you set everything out and they pick. Walking tacos. Um, a lot of Mexican dishes I feel like we can do that with. So, um, so we had a lot of things like that, nachos. We had a lot of recipes like that. And then I found really simple recipes where maybe there was only like three or four ingredients. Uh, and um, I learned like, for instance, shepherd pie, shepherd's pie. We love making shepherd's pie. But I have several kids that don't like hamburger. I have several kids that don't like cheese. I have one child that doesn't like mashed potatoes. So I was making this shepherd's pie in this pan and I would have this part over here with no hamburger and I'd have this part over here with everything but cheese and I'd have this part over here with uh, everything but mashed potatoes. And, and so I had this pan and it, was, it, be, it became so much work to try to make it the way everybody liked it. So eventually, and I'll tell you, it took years 
to get to a point, it, it probably took at least six months to get them to a point where they were finally eating things on a regular basis. Of course, they got used to the school lunches and I figured if they're getting used to the school lunches, they could get used to what I chose to make for dinner. So we would um, a lot of times have them try things. So once they started getting a little bit of food security, and again, it, I'm saying maybe about six months into this, they started realizing that yes, that they were gonna you know have food every day and um, they didn't have to worry as much. So then at that point we started doing things like um, having them try other stuff. And a, a lot of times they'd say they didn't like it. But then maybe, you know, uh, six months later or something, we'd say, let, let, just try it again, you know, taste change. But we did a lot of butter garlic noodles um, because they were used to having plain noodles. And so I found if I just put some butter and garlic on them that they actually loved it that way. Uh, spaghetti, that's another thing. So these are ideas, if you guys are having the same problem out there um, where you have these, uh, Children come into your home and they have trauma surrounding food, then um, these are, are ideas that you could make too uh, because I it took me a long time to figure out what I could make the kids and actually get them to eat. So, um, and, and there are a lot of things out there that I feel like we made that you don't necessarily pick your toppings, but we ended up doing it that way. But uh, hamburgers, if you make hamburgers on the grill, or hot dogs, um, and we wanted them to eat healthy, but at this point in our lives, we just wanted them to eat. We just wanted them to have full bellies. We just wanted them to have some food security. We just wanted them to feel comfortable and secure with their relationship with food. So that is such a process. It is such a process. So again, in our lives, we had to completely backtrack how, uh, what we were doing, so that way we could make sure the kids um, could build their own food security. Okay, now fast forward. Fast forward to when we started doing grocery hauls on YouTube. We were eating terrible, terrible. And I, for a long time, had wanted to change that. But we had been eating that way for years because we, were, we spent those years building that food security for the kids. And even though it, you know, maybe they started to finally realize after six months that they were gonna have the food, building that food security, it took years. It took years and years for them um, to get to that point and then actually be at a point where they were ready to start actually trying things that they had not tried or try things that they didn't think they liked or and we had a couple kids that thought they were allergic to things and we found out that they actually weren't allergic to them. So now we're doing grocery hauls on YouTube and um, I ended up getting a couple comments about the crap we fed our kids. And I thought it was funny actually um, because if you have never been down this path, if you have never had trauma kids in your house, if you have never had kids in your house that have problems with food, that um, were neglected, that didn't eat, uh, if you have never had a large family where you have 11 people to feed and you're trying to find out what you can feed everybody that they'll actually all eat, so that way you're not stuck with um, leftovers, you know, like, uh, 11 people's leftovers every single day of the week. Uh, it was a challenge. It was such a challenge. And so anyways, I got these comments and I just thought it was funny because uh, it is, if you've never been through it, it is hard to understand because I never thought that it would end up like that. I. I did not think, I thought that the kids would come into the house and they would be so happy to see food uh, that they would eat whatever you put in front of them. And it was completely the opposite of that. And um, so they were so picky. They didn't want to eat anything. And I, I think it's, uh, they were so used to going without food and, and having hungry bellies that they just were like, nope, well, we just won't eat then. Okay. so. I got those comments and um, we had already been thinking about eating healthier, but when you've been eating that way for years and years, so it must have been what, maybe five years we were eating that way, um, you get stuck into a pattern. Changing things is hard. 
but changing eating habits, I feel like, is even harder. There's just something about changing your eating habits that is really tough. And I think it's because it's just such a total lifestyle change. So what we did was, um, when the kids started being homeschooled, I felt like that was the perfect time because um, the kids were able to help be a part of the food journey. And I really thought that that was important for them to be a part of it and they could help me pick things out. Now, you, we could have done this even if we didn't homeschool. If they were in public school, we still could have had them do this. Um, it just I found it just easier for us when we started homeschooling. That was when I decided to make the switch. So we started having them go out and look on Pinterest and find things that they thought that they would like. And they had been asking me and asking me for a while if they could cook. And I was a little hesitant at first. Um, I, I like having control of my kitchen and um, I don't, I hate messes and I get very frustrated anytime I have extra messes um, that I didn't have to have because there's, there's so much to do and clean. Um, and I was worried. <laughs> about myself <laughs> that I was going to get overly frustrated um, and that it wasn't going to be a good thing. But I have found out that if kids can cook and kids can help, they can help clean up too. <laughs> so um, that is just what we have done. We have said, if you guys want to cook, that's great. I love your enthusiasm for cooking, but part of cooking your meal is cleaning it up so and cleaning up after yourself and that has been a little bit of a struggle um we have i mean the kids are just they're kids and they don't necessarily like cleaning up after themselves uh, but they do for the most part and sometimes we just have to help uh, encourage them to clean up all the way so they'll do like half of it and then leave half of it and then we have to have them come back so but that's a good lesson I feel like it's a good lesson to have them come back and say okay look look at here you know this is still messy and we need to finish cleaning this up because it's not a hundred percent done yet so lots of good lessons with our food journey I feel like um, their the kids trauma a hundred percent played a role in that food journey we have gotten to a point now though where we started homemaking things and what happened was we were homemaking everything every breakfast every lunch every snack and every dinner and that was so time consuming so time consuming all we were in the kitchen like non-stop all day long and it became hard to do anything else other than cook and bake so now we have come to a point where after about eight months of doing this and it was probably about six months at the six month point we decided that we were going to find a balance. So we are not eating that crap anymore. And I, I think it's funny because somebody actually made that comment. And so that's why I call it that. Uh, we are no longer eating the processed foods, the cereals and that for breakfast. We have like eggs and toast and sausage and bacon. Um, we do all different kinds of things with eggs like the, um, the breakfast burritos and the quesadillas and things like that, breakfast bombs. and. And then there's, um, we'll do like muffins and things like that. The kids make pastries and yes, that's sugar for breakfast, but at least we know what's going in it. Um, and sometimes that's just really good to have. It's yummy to have. Then with our lunches, um, I feel like we've been doing pretty well with those still. We do, um, occasionally we'll do like ramen. You guys, I know, see me buy ramen a lot more. Um, we'll do hot dogs and things like that, uh, which sometimes I feel like you just need a balance and that is what we have been doing. We've been trying to have that balance. So, but we still do have a lot of really good lunches. Sandwiches, we make all different kinds of sandwiches. The Italian sandwiches, and we make the uh, cracked chicken sandwiches. Those are really good. Um, we have made like our hot ham and cheese sandwiches. And all, so all different kinds of sandwiches, but I do still let the kids have bologna sandwiches sometimes and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches sometimes. And um, that just helps on those days where we, we have a lot going on, especially here in Texas. When we're here, we're unpacking right now and doing a lot of things that take a lot of time. Uh, stuff on the farm, you know, out, outside takes a lot of time. And so sometimes it's nice just to have those easy days too. Same thing with breakfast. Sometimes I'll have the kids just have bagels and toast and that helps. It helps create a balance. Then with our snacks, We've been doing a lot more processed snacks. This is the area where I kind of just gave in because um, I, I found it just to be easier, especially with giving in on the snacks. So we do breakfast bars, granola bars. 
Um, Emma does still like to make her coconut bread. She does still like to make homemade wafers and things like that. Um, Rosie did get a turn to try making the homemade wafers. So um, I feel like we, we have a pretty good balance with our snacks. Uh, even though I let the kids do the process stuff a lot, we, we have um, apples, the kids love fruit. So apples and oranges, they do that a lot. Bananas, um, grapes when I buy them. Uh, what else do we do as far as, oh, the vegetable of choice is carrots. Um, so we'll do a lot of that too, though, for our snacks and then, uh, dinners. So dinners, I've, we've been doing really good with dinners. So I'll have the kids go out and pick something on Pinterest. I'll pin it to my boards and then, um, I'll go out and pick from their recipes. They have sent me, uh, they always get super excited when I pick one of theirs. And then we'll talk about like what goes in that. Um, you know, you thought it looked good in the picture. Did you think it tasted good? Um, and you know, there are things that went into that that you didn't think you liked, but when we put it in there, it makes a totally different dish and flavor. And, um, and you did like that. And so, um, we, I do a lot of the picking off of Pinterest for dinners and we'll do things like some, some that take extra time and then we'll do things like simple meals. So like three ingredients or four ingredients and do simpler things too. So we, I feel like dinner is really where uh, we shine on making things from scratch because, uh, and I, the kids will help me. Emma loves to cook dinner a lot. And we've also had some of the other kids start helping too in the kitchen so they can get more confident and help not just with the baking, but also with the cooking because that's a skill that you have to have for your family when you get older too. So, even though they love, everybody loves the baking part the best. So anyways, that has been our food journey, um, starting out when Brianna was little. So that was probably, um, what she's 22. So that's been a lot of years ago. <laughs> so when she was five, we kind of started that. And even before that, I started thinking about food in a different way. Um, I just couldn't quite put my finger on what I was supposed to do at that point. Uh, but we have been on quite the journey becoming vegan and then, um, doing whole 30 and, uh, we've been on a lot of different doing the health, you know, doing a lot of studying on the healthy eating and how food affects your body and how your body builds from the foods you eat. And, um, you know, solving the ADHD issue for Brianna and being able to take her off meds. That was huge, huge. Uh, and then getting to a point where, you know, we have the other kids and teaching them healthy eating habits. And, um, Jade, we tried, we thought her behaviors in the beginning may have been from uh, food sensitivities. We tried, we do have a couple other kids that are allergic to red dye. Uh, they just get completely hyperactive, bounce off the walls if they have it. So we try to stay away from red dye as much as we can, but um, it didn't work the same for Jade as it did for Brianna. But we found other things that worked for Jade. And so, you know, we do know how important food can be though. And I think that, that really ultimately is uh, the journey that we've been on. Finding out how important food is for your body, how it can affect your behaviors, um, how it can affect your moods, and also um, how it can uh, affect how healthy you are on the inside, and creating that food security for the kids that had, you know, the trauma surrounding food, uh, and getting them to a point where they were, um, they were secure with food and they don't have to overeat and uh, they know that it's going to be there all the time and they're able to explore and they, they do so much taste testing. Now they will try all kinds of things um, and they are okay with that. And you know, they're not scared and they won't just flat out say no, like they used to. And watching that they have come so far watching them go from where they started to now. Um, I, I just, I am so thrilled that we have been able to get to a point um, where they're trying all these new things and they're finding out they like them. And that's super exciting to me. So I hope maybe that that offered you guys some insight into our life, into the way we grocery shop, why we do things the way we do, um, and why we were uh, at a certain point and now we're able to explore beyond that point. Um, so, and maybe it would be, maybe this has been helpful for you guys too. If, if you guys 
are having a problem surrounding food with your kids right now, comment down below and let me know what you're having problems with. I would love to hear because we're, we still, we're still having trouble with Gavin um, and trying to get him to eat and he's so skinny and he hates food. He just hates food. And so right now <laughs> we're on a journey with him to figure out, he, he's getting the Carnation Instant Breakfast to try to help keep the weight on um, because he's just having the hardest time. And I feel like we're about to learn a whole new uh, something because I, I think it might be a, a sensory thing. And we have never dealed, we have never dealt with food sensory issues. We ha we've dealt with oral sensory issues as far as chewing on things, but never with food yet. So this is gonna be a whole new journey for us again. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we will see you guys next time. Bye.